As the need to deliver higher performance continues to drive new trends in the spine industry, manufacturers work to develop and market products with improved designs, innovative surgical techniques, and alternatives to traditional spine fusion techniques and devices. Over the next few weeks, we'll take a closer look into the various mechanical tests performed when evaluating spine implants. In today's video, we'll start the conversation on spine implant testing by reviewing the three common test methods involved with a 510K submission for intervertebral body fusion devices. Typically, you should complete test reports for the following tests. Static and dynamic torsion testing for cervical implants. Static and dynamic compression and compression shear testing for cervical and lumbar implants. And subsidence testing for cervical and lumbar implants. It is also recommended that additional testing be performed depending on the specific design, material, and or method of attachment for a given intervertebral body fusion device. One such test is expulsion which is a test to investigate the forces required to dislodge the implant from the intervertebral space. The FDA recommends the following. Identification of a worst case device and rationale for choosing that device. Rationale for the test load and configurations chosen, whether it be axial, bending, or torsion. Your test results and a discussion of those test results in terms of the clinical performance of the device. In addition, the FDA recommends you describe the testing configuration, testing environment, and a rationale for selecting that configuration and environment. Now that we have reviewed some of the general guidelines, let's discuss the three test standards in today's video. The first type of testing we'll cover, static and dynamic construct testing, is typically performed in accordance with ASTM F2077, Test Methods for Intervertebral Body Fusion Devices. ASTM F2077 is used to provide a standard comparison to a predicate device. The test program contains compression, compression shear, and torsion tests. Testing should consist of six of the worst case construct for both static and dynamic testing as identified previously in our discussion. For static testing, the construct is loaded between stainless steel test blocks. For dynamic testing, it's loaded between polyacetyl test blocks. Static testing is usually performed to determine the maximum load the device can withstand and the stiffness of that construct. The results from the static testing are used to determine the initial loads for dynamic testing. Dynamic testing is then performed to develop an endurance curve for your product. Typically, an endurance curve is developed by targeting four breaks and two runouts, depending on the purpose of your testing program. Mechanical failures, such as fatigue cracks, are documented, and depending on the size of fatigue cracks, may cause a stop in the testing. Testing can be formed in ambient or in vitro conditions simulated by a saline fluid. Depending on the goal of the testing, mass loss or SEM particle analysis can be performed. The second standard in today's video, ASTM F2267, is a standard test method for measuring load-induced subsidence of an intervertebral body fusion device under static axial compression. The standard is designed to allow for the comparative evaluation of different intervertebral body fusion devices and provides a basis for the mechanical comparison amongst past, present, and future non-biologic intervertebral body fusion devices. Testing six samples of the worst case implant is the recommended configuration, and testing is usually stopped once the yield has been observed or the intradiscal space is fully collapsed. One major factor to consider when determining a worst case device is a surface area of the implant that will be in contact with the bone surface, as this is a major contributor in the performance during subsidence testing. Expulsion testing, the last of the three test methods we will cover today, is a static test to examine subluxation and expulsion forces to remove the implant from the intervertebral space. The FDA often requires expulsion testing as part of 510K submissions. However, there is currently no ASTM standard for this testing. Although there is no published standard, this is a commonly accepted way to perform the test based on a draft specification. At our lab, we recommend you perform expulsion testing with six samples, maintaining consistency with the other tests performed. Under expulsion testing, the implant is compressed between two test blocks representing the, the vertebral bodies and a physiologically relevant compressive load is applied to the superior and inferior axis. Then a load is applied to the implant in the direction of expulsion, causing translation of the implant. Loading is typically in the direction opposite of insertion. However, depending on the implant's design, it may be necessary to test in multiple directions. That's a review of the three ASTM standards that are common when testing intervertebral body fusion devices. Feel free to contact us with any questions regarding this or any other testing needs. We would be pleased to discuss your upcoming project and answer any questions you may have.